Hello friends, welcome to the channel. If you are a fanatic of guitar and amps like I am, I hope you enjoy this series of videos. First of all, I hope you will apologize for my English, but I am Spanish. I hope the content will be better than the speech. The purpose is to understand the working principles of a classic 2 amp, so that any person can design or modify any stage of this type of amps or make a full one from scratch. For this, we will need some theory. If you have a basic knowledge of electronics, you will have no problem to follow this course. If not, you can complete information on the internet. But any person who follows the course will get a lot of true information about guitar amps. Well, let's go! This is a basic blocks diagram of an amplifier. We can distinguish three different parts the preamp, the output stage, and the power supply. The preamp is the part dedicated to low signal level. The output stage is the part dedicated to increase the power for the speaker. And the power supply is in charge of supplying suitable voltages. What? The signal of an electric guitar is very low, around half a volt. The preamp elevates this level to 20 volts approx, and this goes to the output power that increases not only the voltage, but also the current. The preamp consists of several stages and each one has at least one triode. Characteristics such as distortion and tone are defined by the preamp. This is a brief explanation of how a triode works. A triode is a vacuum tube that has three electrodes and a heater, or a filament. The filament hits the cathode. The cathode emits electrons, the anode attracts these electrons, and the grid controls the flow. The key is that very few volts on the grid have a grid effect in the anode current. Surely the queen of all preamp tubes is this, the 12AX7 in America or ECC83 in Europe. It is a double triode, so we can make two stages with one tube. This tube will be our focus for many chapters. The datasheet is like the identification document of a tube. And here we find the most important chart for design any circuit with tubes, the blade characteristics. This graph shows the relation between the most important parameters in a triode, the plate current, the plate voltage, and the bias voltage. This is where we will draw the load line to calculate the operating point. Let's see it in depth. Here we have the circuit to bias or polarize a triode. We see the higher voltage supply, B+, the anode resistor, RA, and the bias voltage, this is, a DC voltage applied to the grid. As a result of these three values, the tube reacts with a certain plate current and a certain plate voltage. Let's take an example to calculate the operating or bias point. The classic method is draw the load line in the plate characteristics. So, let's begin with it. If we fix the bias voltage, the V+, plus and the anode resistor in this circuit, the consequence is that certain anode current circulates through the tube. We need two points to draw a straight line in the plate characteristics. The first point comes from the suppose that the tube is cut off. Then no current runs, and so the anode voltage is equal to V+, plus 
and this is the maximum voltage that the plate can reach. We call it Vmax. In our case, it's 300 volts. The second point comes from the suppose that the tube is full saturated. That is to say that between anode and cathode there is a short circuit. In this case, the anode current is maximum and it is given by Ohm's law. In this example is 3 milliamps. Now we can draw the load line and calculate the operating point or bias point. We mark 3 milliamps in the plate current axis and 300 volts in the plate voltage axis. Now we can draw a straight line between these two points and look for the cut point with the minus 2 volts bias voltage line. This is our operating point. If we read the coordinates of this point, we obtain 0.8 milliamps as light current and 220 volts as plate voltage. Ok, but what really means the bias point? Well, when a tube is polarized and no external values changes, all the parameters remain constant. That is, it is a static point. But if one value changes, for example the bias voltage, then this point moves to another one, along the load line that we have drawn. We will see later that the behavior of the triode is given by the position of this point in the load line. Ok friends, to finish this first chapter we will make three more examples of load line drawing. Bye bye, and I hope to see you again.